I'm fine. What am I just saying? That's it. Perfect. Nothing. Nothing. You, that's right actually now. good. Oh, oh this, this is, is the place, place where the fishermen gather with oilskins and boots and cape bands batten down. All, All kinds of figures and no dig lines and diggers. A jig and the squid on the squid jig and ground. Yeah, go ahead, Jimmy. So today, uh, our guests are uh, Tom and Hugh Boyd. And Hugh uh, used to captain the bounty, uh, old the tall ship that was here in St. Petersburg. Tom has been on a lot of adventures with him, and we're just going to kind of talk about Tom's life and his life and kind of some adventures they've been on and, and just general BS. Yeah. Really <laughs> where's, the, where's the bounty now? <laughs> <laughs> Resting on a sandy bottom, deep in the oh, Atlantic they sank Ocean. it, right? It, it, well, I don't think on purpose. No, Not I, right. I think they did sink it on purpose, or no, they didn't. A dildo named Robin <clears throat> Walbridge. Excuse me. No but, way. Uh, he was he, the captain after he after you. He sailed out of a harbor <laughs> during a hurricane and into the eye of the storm, <laughs> knowing that that ship couldn't handle it. <laughs> did anybody die in the accident? Or just one other cute crew member member perished. The rest were saved that's rather a, heroically by the men and women in the uh, Coast Guard. They were picked out, plucked out of the water. Well, what's crazy is like in the, what was it, 1960s or early 70s, like a yeah. big wooden ship comes sailing like in from the Gulf of Mexico and all the, like think about like oh, what, what Cuba Cubans, is now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they're like kind of living in the 50s or 60s yeah. of us now. So 40 years ago, 30 years ago, they were probably like, what the hell's going oh, yeah. on? They're like, they're like, coming to get us. Right. The Canadians are definitely invading with one wooden ship. Well, yeah, they probably couldn't see <laughs> the what they thought. The Canadians. <laughs> the Canadians. Well, that's, that's what the flag was on the back. Vats of maple syrup that are going to cover <laughs> us in. Oh, you <laughs> give us some stories about the first time you took it through Panama. How old were you? I was 13 at the time, and this was for a Monty Python film called Yellowbeard. And I mean, being 13 in Zihuatanel is a little bit of a trip, brothers and sisters. So, so Zihuatanel <laughs> is a town, a, a town <laughs> in Mexico, a poor town in Mexico. Yeah. So you're 13, and, and what? And he was, he, your dad was just like, "You want to come? You're coming, or do you want to come?" Was it a? Uh, He's like, "Let's go on an adventure." And I packed up my sea chest and met him over in uh, the dry dock in at the Hendry Corporation. Yeah. <laughs> And they past. had Cheech and Chung had signed on to that movie too. And so I was at a, a bar, bar called Coconuts. So we turn like around that. after Marty left and in walks Cheech with a beautiful woman next to him. And my buddy Osmond says, Take Cheech, I've seen everything he ever did. He reaches over, pulls up the girl's sh- skirt and says, I hope not everything. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> no way. So I got thrown over the board. <laughs> how high? How high was it up on the side of that? Boat? Fifteen feet. No okay. Big deal. Not too bad. But they had just pumped the black water tanks. Wait, I don't know if I want oh, to tell it. Yeah, tell it. What do you the mean? The black tanks. So like all the, the poop. Shit, yeah, yeah, the poop. Poop and pee. Justin. Justin. Okay. Justin. He was an original hippie. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Was that I, the one who was weaving the hats? Oh, that was a different dude. Uh, yeah, it seems hippie-ish. Whatever happened to him? Oh, man, that's not a good end of the story. No? Let's just say he vanished up in the North Country, Northwest Territories of Canada. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, that's, that's a beautiful ending to, the, he, to uh, his part of the story. He had yeah. a really cool old truck, and he built this. He was a master woodworker, and he built this really kick-ass little apartment on the back of the truck. And I think he just meandered on north that's until awesome. he couldn't go no more. That's pretty rad. I think, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, uh, what was it, Into the Wild kind of almost? Mm. Can you Badness. tell us a quick story about the whole Ted Turner purchase of the Oh, bounty? yeah, so what happened? MGM's. He bought the whole MGM company, Lock, Stock, and Barrel. And it came and with a boat. He up and he goes, came with a ship. And, you know, he was a big sailing guy from way back Ted in the Turner day. Ted Turner was? Oh, yeah. He sailed in the... Uh, in the was it like a World War One or two guy? Does he no, he was Sourcy Boats. Big uh, multi-million okay. dollar outfits. Oh, wow. And, Never had any problems with Turner, but the people he surrounded himself were a bunch of idiots. Yeah. (laughs) Who? Ted Turner? Ted Turner. Well, most rich people are surrounded by idiots. Dad loved this ship more than life itself. Yeah. And he says, well, yeah, she's still working, ready to go. We, some of the sails have uh, mildewed and are rotten. Right. And his words were, well, fix the fucker. 
what were the sails made out of back then? Like, was it canvas or was it? Because I feel like hemp? now. Originally, yeah, they were hemp. But okay. Uh, these were yeah, canvas. Yeah, hemp, bro. You could smoke them, bro. Yeah. <laughs> no, there were only a few lines on the ship that were actually made out of hemp. I had to do a few the lines. The steering <laughs> line was one of them. I'll do the museum. Was. When it was at a museum. Wait, that the museum. There it is. Well, haha, hello there, mates. Welcome to the bounty. Say, have you noticed a special kind of flavor in the air since you came? Why is oakum, tar, black spruce, oak, pine, manila, yes, and even all sweat? That's one way of knowing that you'd not come aboard a phony, but a real wind battling, timber shaking, swell busting wind jammer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you could drop a sea bag in any port in this world and you not see the likes of the ship you're aboard right now. Say, have you got a minute to spare and a partial to the little yarning? I'll tell you why that is. My name's Hugh Boyd. I've bozed on the Benny and I've been with this barnacle bottom old wind harpy ever since you came down the ways in Lunenburg, Nova Scotia in 1960 and kissed into the Atlantic. What's that you say? Calling the ship a wind harpy? Well, huh, that's a sailor's way of talking about something he loves. Far too much to talk about it in any other way. The, <laughs> oh, <laughs> no way. Is that what, is that, was that his, uh, oh my God. That was his little monologue Great. when you walked no in? No way. There. Yeah, he was practicing it for end over all the time. Then Ted Turner bought it, and then they made that, uh, this is terrible, they made uh, the... The one porno movie on no, the, yeah, the, the Pirates, pirates movie? That was yeah, made yeah, on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of my that favorite a, movies. <laughs> now, I might be mistaken, uh, but I could swear that that was moored at the pier when they did that. Yeah, that really? was... Oh, really? Yeah, that was... That That's, was a 90s. That, that had some of my favorite actresses in it. Yeah. We went into... Bring it up a little. Uh, Key West, Miami. Uh, God, could you imagine, like... Sailing that ship through Key West with all the reefs, I'd lose it. Oh yeah, I'd, the tight. I, don't know, I guess if you stuff. know, you know, and that's it's not a thing. But well, as it turned out, there was a bunch of girls ulcer. sunbathing, topless on a floating dock, and we got right here close oh to it. Good. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we might have no rocked the dock. We, we, we beached it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened to the other guy that bought it. After that, you were just a. Uh, he, he, you were just over it, didn't want to deal with it anymore, didn't want to deal with the movie, or was he just kind of like retired? They were retired of him and decided someone else should be captain? Yeah, what How is that upheaval? Yeah, that was pretty rough. Uh, they had moved the ship down to Miami oh, for okay. Bayside, and uh, they didn't want you staying aboard anymore, so you brought your old w camper van and camped in the parking lot. <laughs> so if you're the captain of the bounty... For however many years, it, like, do they? I mean, is there a pension? Do they, they like? Is there like, you know what I mean? Like, or do they just say, "See you later"? Ted Turner bought this boat. Deal with it. Like, you've been like the cur like the curator and like the curator, owner good word. Yeah. of this ship for however many years, and now, like, you're not allowed to sleep on it anymore. Like, there's plenty of room. That's what, what broke his heart, and that's why I had to climb all those mountains. <clears throat> okay, so what were you doing in Greece while he was over there? Climbing mountains and doing man shit. Well, you know what goes on in Greece. <laughs> so spin, Just spin leave it alone. Breaking plates and... Uh, Spanakopita and wine. Nice. <laughs> Did you, Were you working over there? No, just a backpacking. <clears throat> any, uh, any terrible stories or amazing or stories? Yeah. Yes. So over in the little town, when they catch the octopus... And they bang it on a rock. And I swear the guy had one arm longer than the other. And then they would coat it with, I think it was vinegar, and throw it up over the awning tent posts. And the wasps would come down from the mountains and the chew on the, the octopus because it's notoriously tough. And they would be chewing away on the octopus. And then the guy would throw it on the grill, a little lemon and a beer, and away you go. That's what I do with my McNuggets. <laughs> yeah, every time. Uh, that's what McDonald's definitely does. Absolutely. Did you learn anything from Greece that yes. you could share with us? <laughs> Brecolo. Oh, yes. I was talking to the owner of one restaurant. He said, Tom. Tom. Wait, I can't tell you that. Wait, well, yes, <laughs> sure. Birds, fish, and women. You eat with your hands. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> so Dad found out that they had beer on the other side of the island, and he rented a little Vespa and started to make runs 
to the other side and brought back beer. That is and he made a insane. deal with the, uh, with the chef so he could store the beer in the walk-in freezer. And Brando caught wind of this and said, I'll have one of those beers. And, uh, and oh, Dad this is when they're it. filming Muni on the Bounty. Okay, nice so cool. they're filming Muni on the Bounty. And Brando's an alcoholic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Who was it in the 40s or 30s? When Dad made enough money on that okay, deal 60s. to buy a, a Corvette when he got back to Los Angeles. From selling beers to Marlon Brando? No uh, way. Not just Marlon Brando, Great but idea. to everybody. Did, did you enjoy Hanano beers? <laughs> yeah. Was that a good I beer? too many. Yeah, I did. Pretty good <laughs> beer? Dang. God, it's crazy how you could have made money back then. Like, just knowing someone who had a cooler... And being able bunch. to keep beer cold, or just buy you can buy like a vet. Those after islands, that, good to go. Oh, <laughs> pay attention. Chapters. Sorry about that. I'm getting drunk off this uh, right. Sam Adams. Easy. They're not a sponsor. Don't, <laughs> don't mention them. <laughs> We're uh, off to my love with a boxing glove, glove ten thousand miles away. Hey, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cheers. This is so good. You're hilarious. God, this, I need to know more sailing yeah, songs. I feel like a complete. I'm a complete farce. Justin just I like the idea that um, you just use the wind, you know, and you don't need anything else except for I need a motor to get in and out of the dock. But <clears throat> but I really liked that you could just literally get going somewhere with no fuel, no nothing, just using like the elements. You know what I mean? And I was like, you know what? My goal is to get to Egmont. And I got there. And on the way back, uh, crazy like thunderstorm hit and it almost sank me. <laughs> First time oh, going yeah, there, sunk it head. kicked my ass. Did you take on water? We did take that's on water. That's what started this podcast. Yeah, that's what actually started the podcast. This is the was, first podcast about that. Right? Yeah, I got it's boring. Um, though, yeah, it is pretty boring. I'm but just I, um, Dad did, was, or we had had John Lero on board as a pilot a few times, and Dad was a friend. He was the man who was piloting the ship that ran into you old Skyway. Oh, really? But yeah, so what? So what did you guys know that My, guy? My uh, dad was on when it, when it hit, but he dukes a hazard. <laughs> he jumped. Yeah, he's safe. <laughs> he's safe. <laughs> See, <laughs> even right. generally. Da, 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 da. So that's why I always <laughs> gun it driving over the skyway, just in case. <laughs> you gotta just. <laughs> I'm, you hit that, you I'm hit going that, to hell. I'm you dying. Hit that part so, right. so that guy, the what was his name? The, the guy that piloted the John Lero. John Lero. And so dad is a soft touch. So he accepted a. Invitation for dinner. We joined him at his place by a lake, but he had a rough time. The uh, the guilt of that, well, even though he so was when you guys had dinner, this was after the fact. Yeah. He he yeah. was stricken with MS. Really, and I think that it really it weighed upon his soul. Even though I felt that he was innocent. Well, that was one of like the biggest hands down biggest uh mm. like shipping mm. freighter accidents like oh ever in yeah. history for sure um it's when like when that thing struck the the old skyway our dad had met him before because he mm. had helped pilot the bounty okay through the uh, tampa bay he was a a very fine tampa bay pilot have you ever heard anything about like the tampa triangle oh no that's or anything like me. that really yeah. So supposedly someone wrote a book called The Tampa Triangle, and it's got all the crazy, just weird weather things that happen. And Whoa. supposedly there's a sky, there's a, um, there's the ghost of the Skyway. Whoa. Supposedly, like you wait, like you'll see a hitchhiker, and people will pick her up or him up. I can't remember mm-hmm. if it was a girl or a guy. And people would get in, they'd get in the back of the truck, and then they get to the other side. And there wouldn't be anybody there. Oh, really? That's great. No one picks hitchhikers up anymore. Yeah. Well, it was an 80s book. Now so, it's just yeah. a faulty Amber yeah. Alert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shine Hour. on my shoulders makes me happy. <laughs> Sunshine in my eyes can make, make me cry. cry. Sunshine on the water. Look so lovely. <laughs> Sunshine and cannabis always <laughs> takes me high. <laughs> Toodaloo, everybody. <laughs> really want to thank Captain Hugh Boyd and Tom for letting us come set up in their house and do this really, really special podcast. Hands down, the most legendary one we've done yet. 
Um, thank you guys so much. Thank you, Tara. Thank you, Rob. And thank you, everybody else. Have a good one.